Hi there, and welcome to this uh, latest episode of Totally Unscripted. Um, so today we've got quite a bit to get through. So uh, in a second uh, or two, uh, Bruce is going to um, talk about the new uh, Sheets developer metadata, um, which is available now. Um, so this has got some interesting functionality within Google Sheets. Um, uh, before that, we got some news and releases. Uh, so we'll, we'll uh, release updates. So we'll go through that just to highlight a couple of things. Welcome to um, Steve and Bruce, who who are joining us in the Hangout. I've shared the Hangout link if anyone else wants to drop in uh, and contribute to the, this session. So uh, moving on. So uh, what have we got? So in terms of news from Google, there's been a couple of things. So um, one of the things I always get asked is how sustainable is Google Apps Script? Will Google pull the plug any second? And there was a post recently which I think underlines more evidence that Google Apps Script is, is quite embedded um, within Google itself, which I think is a, a good sign. So this was a post on how the issue tracker for Google Apps Script, which is part of a bigger issue tracker that Google used for all their products, is actually there's lots of app script behind that in terms of notifications. Um, so there was a post recently highlighting this and as part of that, uh, it also highlighted that there are um, over 70,000 weekly active scripts within Google alone. So, um, you know, Googlers are, are having fun with app script. It would be nice to see um, some more activity from Googlers if they've got nice bits of script within in the communities. I know there's some within the developer relations team that share bits and pieces with um perhaps be good to be seeing a bit more um so the other big um announcement was uh, related to slides so previously there was uh slides api and slides uh, i think advanced service but now there's a slide service and also there's slide add-on so if you go into google slides there is the tool script editor so you can start coding away with bits and pieces if you previously used the Slides API, it's slightly different as a slide service. It's more like the Docs and Sheets uh, service. So there's a, uh, instead of doing kind of batch updates to slides uh, as JSON objects, you can uh, kind of drill down into individual elements of uh, slides. Um, Bruce, I think you've released something um, already on the, the Slides add-on front. Uh, well, actually, I've got a, a, an add-on that does both slides and sheets. So in other words, it, it's the same add-on. It detects which one it's running in. But because there's not really a way to publish it yet to be in both contexts, it's only working in the in the sheet mode right now because right. I don't want two different add-ons doing the same thing. So I'm just waiting for the ability to, to publish in both contexts, and then I'll, 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 I'll post about it then. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think it's. Is there? Have you got an issue ticket open that on? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah. Okay, so we'll maybe take that out and share that if yep. people are interested in that, and um, they can start that. Um, I, uh, Martin, I also saw a question that was on the uh, Google Plus uh, community, where there someone was asking with the slide service, does it have uh, like cursor position where the cursor is? And I believe the answer is no, because we didn't see it there. Have you heard anything about? Um, I've looked at the slide service, and cursor position isn't something I recall being there. Um, uh, it's, it's not. Yeah, so it's more, it's less of kind of the Google Docs side of thing. Yeah, I don't uh, think it's a problem, because you can always put something somewhere, then people can yeah. drag things, right? So. I also I haven't looked to see if there are any event driven stuff. So on change, I haven't looked to see if there are any triggers um, uh, that you can hook into there for the development side. I don't know, Bruce, did you? So so don't forget what the slides service in, in App Script is is a uh, an App Script wrapper for the slides API. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, the slides API is is not is not really designed to be container bound. So therefore. Unlike Docs, which doesn't have an API, in fact, um, it, it's not really as bound to the 
um, to the container sheet as, you did, as the other ones are. It may come in time, but right now it's a wrapper for the Slides API. So everything you can do in the Slides API, you can also do in Slides, which means, of course, that you know you don't have some of those kind of interactive things. Mm -hmm. um, so early days, um, uh, but um, another nice to see again uh, the App Script platform developing and um, another opportunity for add-ons development. Um, so uh, some some more marketplaces for you to to start looking at. Um, so as part of the um, slides release, there, there was actually a blog post from uh, Lucid Chart, uh, just detailing some some of the bits and pieces that you know they would they did in the development. So if you want the kind of behind the scenes, you can look at that. Um, so there was a, quite a big outage um, in October, early October. Um, which uh, certainly I was trying to do some script projects at the time and I just gave up in the end. It seemed to, um, in terms of project creation within the, the cloud pl platform, there was an, an issue which impacted on Google Apps Script. Um, so it was nice, uh, Wesley Jim, who's a developer advocate at Google, um, actually posted on the Google Apps Script community just to um, update us on that situation. I think there were a couple of other issues in the tracker as well, recently related around performance. I don't know, Steve, if there was anything um, that you comes immediately to mind for you? Uh, no, no I, I don't recall anything right now. Um, so, you know, if you do encounter problems with that script, uh, general devices, uh, have a look in the issue tracker, see if there's anything for you to um, star and follow, or um, you know, post in the communities or the issue tracker uh, if if you're detecting something. Um, so it's actually been quite a busy period as well for release notes. Um, so this is from the Google Apps Script official documentation. So um, in September there there were some updates to uh, the Gmail service. So uh, around uh, draft messages. And also the, the priority inbox. Uh, there was also, as we've covered, the update around slides. Um, there were a number of calendar service, group service, and spreadsheet service updates. Um, so, uh, in the case of calendar, there were a number of new methods added. Um, I think some of these have been long standing issue tickets, um, they've finally been resolved. Um, so, uh, just to highlight those and um, the documentation goes into more detail about those. Uh, the other one is um, OAuth client verification for add-ons. So Steve, um, I don't know if you want, to, this was something that you picked up quite quickly and uh, I don't know if you want to talk to this a bit. Yeah, sure, just briefly. Um, it, it came to my attention when I was working for a client, uh, three add-ons were published and it passed, we got the acknowledgement that it was approved and then we went to the public, you know, domain to to look at it, and we and we got the unsafe warning message. And of course, I scratched my head to say that's not supposed to happen with the add-on process. So then I noticed the next day after uh, co contacting someone that they did change the process where before you uh, submit your add-on for review, you're now supposed to just like with other web apps, submit the form for the OAuth client verification process. So now that's a new step. It's no big deal. It's just an, an extra step. So uh, the continued evolution of that script. Did 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 you sense this causing frustration for people? Did anyone get caught in limbo between? Uh, well, I I did. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I don't recall anyone else on the add-on community uh, posting that. Mm. Um, however, it does remind me of a, another post that's slightly off topic, and that is I had a post out there a few weeks, a couple weeks ago, about um, some people were reporting a delay of the normal approval process for add-ons. Yeah. I think it was and, two weeks, wasn't it, or more? Right, right. And then I heard back from one of the Google contacts saying that uh, there was a delay, but they're back on track and everything should be fine. And so we went another week or so with no complaints, but then just this week, I saw a couple of people saying they're waiting a little long again. So 
Uh, I think it's just a matter of, you know, the flow of work they have during the week. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's just one of those things we have to be patient with, I guess. Mm. Uh, so that's, that's useful to know. And again, the, there is the G Suite add-ons community as well, where you can, if you've got add-ons, specific questions or tips and bits and pieces you want to share. Um, so um, moving on uh, to some of the community stuff. So um, uh, th there's quite a, a lot of stuff that um, has been picked up. So, uh, well, I've, I've kind of picked up and um, I, I, I thought I'd just go through a couple of these. So just kind of following on from uh, last month's Totally Unscripted, where we were talking about uh, Data Studio and uh, community connectors. So this is a way, basically, it's app script um, is used to provide data into Data Studio. Uh, and Dimu has uh, uh, posted um, something that was quite interesting. So in the official documentation for community connectors, it, it mentions create a manifest file within the script editor. And this just doesn't exist right now. So there is, uh, within the community connectors, it is, I think, a developer preview. So you have to sign up. So there's obviously uh, something uh, Google are working on around manifest files uh, for Google Apps Script. So um, when we get more information about those we, we, that we can share, we will. Um, so again, something else around uh, kind of something that appeared then disappeared rather quickly. Um, Barry Roberts um, uh, came across and managed to grab a, a screenshot of um, uh, a script manager. Uh, which was uh, under the, the tools menu in Sheets. Um, so again, uh, we've got no more details on this. Um, so uh, again, indication that um, Google are tinkering behind the scenes. Um, this was actually a nice post I thought Bruce put in um, around the offset function. So uh, this is in um, uh, the Sheets service. Uh, so uh, there are a number of ways that you can use offset. The way that Bruce highlighted was um, just you know to grab the header row. Um, so um, uh, I thought that was a nice nice tip. Um, so uh, hopefully you can uh, start using that one in your script projects. Um, so here was a, another one that. Um, uh, are related to new Google Sites. So previously, with old Google Sites, um, there, there was a script editor in there, and you could publish uh, basically widgets and web apps within uh, the old Google Sites. With the new sites, there wasn't anything, but um, Google have uh, started permitting people to embed URLs. So um, uh, there's been updated guidance that um, Steve's highlighted um, on the official documentation of that the process. Basically, you're just publishing as a web app and then using the URL um, in Google Sites. Um, so I had a quick test of this earlier. And um, sometimes when you publish web apps and embed them in other websites, you get the annoying this, this app wasn't made by Google. So uh, that's not visible um, when you're embedding uh, a new Google site. So it's a very clean um, look. So um, again, you can start considering how you're going to use Google Apps Scripts and new sites. So it might bring more people across to, to new sites. Um, <clears throat> I don't think. Was there anything else? It, was this something you got to play with, Steve? Or um, No, I didn't actually play with it, per se. But before this, I wrote a Chrome extension to that was right, kind, yeah. of, kind of get you there. <laughs> uh, before before they uh, they had this, so uh, this is much better. <laughs> <laughs> so now, if someone wants to use the new Google Sites and have a app script web app um, embedded, it's possible. So. Yeah, yeah. So uh, one one bit of advice um, I think that came out of this comment thread is um, when you're putting your published web app URL in, make sure it's not your uh, uh, test the latest code version, so the one with the DV dev at the end of it. Um, you want the 
EX, EC uh, version, or, or that will cause you some headaches. Um, so this was um, another useful post from Demo Design. So um, just uh, it's probably worth just delving into that one. It, it, it's looking at um, how you set up push notifications in Google Apps Script, which isn't straightforward um, just because of your patch doesn't have all the, the header information that you need. So um, this is quite a nice approach to the community just detailing or outlining um, how you could do that with um, Firebase. Um, so uh, something else, uh, um, Andrew Rob um, uh, started a uh, community projects collaboration ideas list. Um, so um, basically crowdsourcing uh, knowledge, expertise, enthusiasm around different projects. Um, so there are various links there for you to submit stuff for that. So early days with that, but um, we might revisit that one and start highlighting some of the projects um, that get off the ground. So again, it's nice to see the community um, coming together and contributing on stuff like this. Um, so at the start of the show, I mentioned, and um, we mentioned last month, um, that there was a new Google or, or uh, well, there have been a couple of attempts, I think, of Google Apps Script uh, Slack channels, but we've got another one going uh, thanks to Andrew Roberts and uh, uh, John from Broughton, I think, have been the key drivers behind this. And um, as part of that, um, John from Broughton has actually developed a very nice um, Google Apps Script powered sign up form for Slack. Um, so um, uh, Slack can be a bit problematic sometimes. Um, in terms of signups, um, so uh, Jonathan's documented a, a very simple form. So if you've got other Slack communities that you, you want to provide a means for people designing up, um, you can check out Jonathan's article on that. And you can uh, sign, sign up to the Google Apps Script Slack channel as well. Um, I've, so uh, we've talked quite a bit in previous shows around um, Firebase. So this is just another uh, data solution around Firebase. How relevant this is going to be Google Apps to Google Apps Scripters? Not entirely sure. Um, at Firestore, it just seems like a bigger version of the real-time database with um, better querying. Um, so Bruce, you're quite a avid Firebase user. Is there anything in Firestore that caught your eye as useful? Yeah, I, I started to use Firestore on a, on a project I'm doing right now. I, th I think it's, uh, you know, it's more scalable than, than Firebase and it's got, as you say, better querying capabilities and so on. But aside from that, it's kind of pretty much the same thing. Um, it, it's, it's considered to be a document database rather than, rather than um, real-time database, although it actually is. Uh, so it's kind of like MongoLab, if you, if, it's kind of like MongoDB if you use that. Um, I think the, the recommendation from Firebase is if you're already using Firebase real-time database, then don't change. But if you're starting a new project, then may as well use this. So uh, as I say, I've only just started to use it in a new project. So maybe next time I'll tell you how, how I find it. <laughs> but uh, you know, the real-time database from Firebase is yeah. Is great, and you know, loads of people that use App Script also use Firebase. So I assume that they'll now move on to the Firestore. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll see if there's any interesting developments App Script related to that. Um, so uh, this uh, something from actually from Bruce. So um, there are a couple of uh, authentication libraries out there. Um, so uh, um, Bruce has got um, has been developing Goa. So uh, Bruce, you've recently pushed out a couple of new features for Goa, which I I really like. I don't know if you want to quickly flag those. Yeah. So um, the, the the there's obviously lots of different flavors of OAuth two authentication, and the easiest ones are service accounts and so on. But the 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 more complex ones is where you have to ask for a user's authorization to be able to do something. Um, and the problem before is that you needed to create a kind of a, 
um, your own web app to be able to ask the question if it's okay to do something within within app script or sorry within OAuth two, um, which meant you had to create a web app or a sidebar or something like that, which was a pain because it had nothing to do with what you were trying to do in your in, in your script. So now Go is able to do that for you, so you don't have to care anymore about needing to do HTML service or anything like that. You just say, I want one, and you just got to say where about to put it. Um, so that was the first thing. And then additionally, I've added a few different kind of services and the different kinds of um, OAuth2 um, variations as they come along. It's, it's very easy to add them. Um, so I've provided a custom service to allow people to use services it doesn't know about. But better if you do do that and you do create a configuration for some service that I don't know about, then give it to me and I'll put it in so that everyone can use it. That's great. Um, I, I did a couple of YouTube examples recently. So the first one used the OAuth2 uh, app script library, and the second one used um, uh, Goa. So um, you can dig those posts out from my blog, and you can actually see the differences in terms of the setup. Um, and given this new development that Bruce is, I'll probably need to revisit that and show how you can do it even quicker. Um, but you can see, I, I saw, uh, found the Goa one to uh, one kind of the usual kind of learning curve with these things. But once you got your head around it, um, it, it it seemed very straightforward. And so um, I, I'm definitely a, a Goa convert. So I'll be Goa all the way from here. Um, so finally, just to highlight. Um, we're coming into uh, the GDG DevFest season. Um, so uh, Google have a number of developer groups around the world uh, and between August and the end of November, um, a lot of these, if not most, put on some sort of uh, uh, day of um, to, to bring the community together. So. Um, there's a link there, uh, and we'll share the slides after the show where you can find out a DevFest close to you. Um, if you're in London on the 11th, um, Bruce and myself will be uh, presenting in, in London. So um, if, if you if you want to say hello, please pop by. Um, tickets are free, um, but you do have to sign up. Um, so. Um, Bruce will be talking about Google Apps Script. Um, I'm taking a break from Apps Script to talk about Google Analytics, um, but uh, hopefully there'll be uh, good events. Uh, and with that, I would just like to thank um, Bruce for his contribution and Steve as well um, uh, for his bit contribution as well. And um, we'll uh, see you next time. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.